All right, so I want to, um, obviously, the Lord, I woke up with these things on my heart um, pertaining to how great our God is. And so this morning, I just, I just spent some time with him. And as I was trying to listen to him, the two songs that he gave me was Raise a Hallelujah. And then the second one was Same God. Because it's so important for us to frequently revisit the fact that our God is still working even when it doesn't look like he's not working it's important to know that even if you're going through some hard times God is still the same he's the same God that parted the sea he's the same God that moved the mountains he's the same God that moved through a mule to speak if he can move through a mule he can move through anybody male or female you understand that right God can do what I see his kingdom is upside down to our worldly uh, place here. And it's hard for us to fathom sometimes because we are in the world and we are part of the world, but we are not of the world. When you become a believer, you are no longer of the world. You are of the heavenly realm. And then you bring that to earth because now you possess him and him alone. And what he does is he transforms us from the inside out. So, with that being said, a couple of things. Um, as I was in the back during um, pre-service, um, the Lord reminded me of the ten leopards. And, you know, Jesus did a lot of healing while he was here on earth. He's still doing a lot of healing. And I was listening to a testimony this morning. It's just because it came this way. And I love how God works. And there was this young man that... They always go down to Florida to swim. And if you don't understand what an ocean is like, you always be cautioned in an in a ocean because there's riptides that can come in. Or you can get tumbled in these waves that you think are so fun and you hit your head. Or they knock you out. They knock the breath out of you and you take a breath in and you, you drown. And so there was this young man. He was 12 years old. And he, um, he was swimming down in Florida. And his dad was out in the water as well, and the other kids, and people were watching from the beach. These kids were watched over. Waves are coming in. All of a sudden, they see this body bobbling of this 12-year-old kid. So the dad runs up, grabs the child. He's lifeless. He brings him up to shore. He puts him down. Their cousin, who they go with, and her family started doing CPR. She was a nursing student. And there was he was blue. He was purple. He was no life, no pause, no breath, no nothing. Nothing. And all of a sudden, two nurses that were down the beach, male and female, come running down, and they started doing CPR. See, God is our provider, y'all. Sometimes we don't understand how he is providing, right? And so he is bringing the word to life through people. That's what he does. You know, we just don't be all holy and we're just like this. No, we are active word being used by the Spirit of God. Do you understand that? Because Jesus is the word. He was in the beginning, and he still is, and he lives in us, which means his word is alive and active through us. Ha! God is good. So down comes these nurses, and they start performing this, this CPR, but it had been minutes in a very long time. His little sister, excuse me, maybe older sister, stands up and says, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven, come and fight for me. And she just started singing it and singing it over and over on the beach. And other kids that were around and people followed her lead. And she just started singing. And all of a sudden, the boy got a pulse. And they rushed him to the hospital. They said, hey, we're still not out of the woods. Listen, he, was, he didn't get oxygen for a long time. Something didn't really happen to him. You know, we don't know yet. We're not out of the woods. And immediately the wife, the mother of this child, put her hands on him and started praying. And then the husband joined in. The doctor came and laid his hands on this child and pleaded the blood of Jesus over him. When they went to transport him off from the gurney or wherever, the, the emergency room bed, into a hospital bed, he woke up. He woke up. And he said, Mom, you just got to have more faith. 
She said she knew it was her son and his personality. So you see, God is able to do the impossible. You see, we, we think that he isn't the same. We think that just because he did it for Marge or he did it for Dan, he's not going to do it for me or he's not going to do it for Marcy. No, you got to stop the stinking thinking because he is the same. But not everybody really goes after him. Not everybody understands that we are representing the kingdom of heaven. So when you read about the ten leopards, it's said in, in, in it's, um, I'm sorry, Tim, it's 17, starting in verse 11. And I'm going to read quite a bit, Jessica, so you're going to have to go back and forth even if I'm reading, because otherwise it's black for too long. Is that working? Oh, I'm sorry. Luke, it's Luke. <laughs> well, I got the chapter out there, guys. Pick one, right? No, we would be everywhere. So it's, it's Luke chapter 17, and I'm going to start in verse 11. I get excited, and I think I said something, and I never said it. Yeah, I love that we don't have to be perfect in church. We serve the perfect one, and we're all in transformation. It doesn't matter how smart you are how intelligent you are, how not intelligent you are, because the word says that he will take the foolish of the world and he will make the wise foolish. That's what he does with people. So in this story, it said, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria of Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there he met 10 leopards, these are people that were full of sores. They were outcasts, and they were standing afar off according to the word. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So here they were. They understood who they needed to, what, call upon. They knew that they needed to call upon the name of the Lord because he, they knew that leprosy was not something that could be healed on earth. It could not be. They were outcast. And it was very contagious. <laughs> How many things are contagious in this world that we see as leprosy? Come on, guys. There's some still leprosy going on in our world, and it might not be sores. It could be spiritual leprosy. It could be body. It could be mind. It could be anything. But listen, nonetheless, Jesus is still the same God. The same God that rose Jesus from the grave. The same God that put a spirit within us that is far able to do abundantly more than we could ever ask. But we don't ask because we don't have belief. We're like, yeah, but I'm not sure I have enough faith. <laughs> if it's as much as a mustard seed, the word teaches you can move a mountain. It can be used. Everyone has a measure of faith according to the word of God. So you just got to put that faith into action because faith is action. Faith is not just, well, I believe. It's like, okay, I believe I'm going to step in. During pre-service today, I asked, I asked uh, I've been asking thought questions, and they don't have to have wrong answers, but there's scripture in the word, and it talks about how when you... There's, uh, you step into the river, at first you know it's, they're standing there and it's, knee, it's ankle deep and then it's knee deep and then it's thigh deep and then pretty soon they're swimming in this river. So we were talking about that today, and what that meant, what does that mean, what does that mean? And she said, well, I think that that ankle deep is probably just stepping in to becoming new believers and as we grow, the water grows and, and, and now you're starting to feel the curtain. It's at your knees. I don't know about you, but I feel the current at my knees and, um. So in that, you start to move. And then when it hits your waist, now you're really starting to move. And then once it hits your chest, you can't fight the current. And you, you just start to flow with the Spirit of God, or you can fight that current, which is going to be a losing battle. It might take you to shore over here, over there, and eventually you might get to your destination if you will just let the liver, the, not the liver, but the river, flow in your life not everybody walks with uh, a, uh, the faith to walk up to somebody and pray healing for them even though they have that 
Not everybody walks up and gives words, prophetic words, because not everybody has the confidence yet. But we teach you not how to be a prophet or to prophesy. What we teach you is relationship with Jesus and how you can hear his voice. And then we give you some activation so you understand the difference between your voice and the voice of Almighty God. So when you hear him in a grocery store, that all of a sudden you feel like you're having an anxiety attack and it's the Holy Spirit. And you start to move in it and you release that prophetic gift in your life for somebody. You know, Jezebel hated prophecy because Jesus is prophecy. She hated it. She hated God. And so she tried to kill it in the Old Testament. It didn't work. Because our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he is working today in this New Testament, in this church, out in our community. And sometimes we might not see what God is doing, but he is doing something. Pastor Rick said to me on Monday, we have a conference call on Mondays, and we were talking about some stuff, and he said, Pastor Joyce, you don't understand always. The words that have been spoken over your life are coming into fruition. He said, you are reaching more people than you know, and it is affecting your community more than you know so. And I believe that. I believe that the first time that we had um, a storm after we opened this church, a freak storm come off Lake Michigan. And we were, at, we were here at the church on a Tuesday night having Bible study. And lightning struck. And it felt like it hit the land that we, we were on. But it didn't. It hit the land across the street. And the house burnt down. I remember coming outside and I'm hearing the Lord. And he says, that lightning strike was meant for you in this church. And, and he showed me a vision of the church having a bubble over it like the Jetsons, you know? Anybody remember the Jetsons? Like, you know, the Jetsons. So, like, these bubble, you know, they would live in outer space, and they had to stay in their bubble. And God showed me the protection over his church. Because just before that, we started playing music outside 24-7. It never shuts off. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah, right? And so when that music is playing, music doesn't stop. Sound keeps going even when you can't hear it. And the Lord told me that he was going to open up the heavens over this community. He was going to cause cracks. He was going to bring down addiction and religion. And I've watched it happen for the last 14 years. Because it's God, the same God that rose Jesus from the grave the same god that seen the 10 leopards the same god when he heard him say have mercy on us in verse 14 it says so when he saw them he said to them go show yourself to the priest and so it was that as they went they were cleansed hello <laughs> he said go and show yourself to the priest they still were yuck. They still were pussing. Sorry, Tammy. <laughs> they were cleansed on their way. Not at the word spoken, but the word released by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one that had a commission, the one who had authority and power. They had to have enough faith to start walking even though they were not healed. <laughs> right so why do you think that we are required to have faith and to start walking even when we don't see the outcome huh <laughs> right David I'm talking to me I have had God tell me things and I better start walking because it's the only way it's going to come to pass is if I start walking that I believe the word that I believe what he's saying. And he said, go and show yourself. Show myself. They're not going to let me near, near them. Go and be a pastor. What? God, I'm going to be persecuted. People are said, they're told I'm not supposed to be a pastor. I don't care what people say. You serve me, not man. Oh, but God, I'm not putting my name out there. They're going to know a woman's in here and they're going to run. Right, Ray? Ray didn't know. He came in. He was waiting. For the pastor to come in. And then he realized I was it. <laughs> he wanted to leave. But he didn't because there was a friend here that God sent. And see, God knows how to get us where we need to be. Ray's been here ever since. 
a person that understands the word, the Bible, the grace of God, that knows, and God's brought him here to be used. He says, I don't care what man says. I know what God's going to do. I see him in you. I, he said, I didn't just meet you. I met the power of God through you. And that's what made me stay. So I had to go without credentials, without schooling. I had to go by the word. I had to go and do what God told me to do. What if he's going to ask you to do something crazy? And eventually we got my name out there because I'd grow in confidence and courage, but it took a while because I didn't, I wasn't mature enough to probably handle them with grace and mercy. I'd have handled them with man's hands. I'd have told them, don't let the door hit you. You know the rest. And I used to say that. I mean, that's where my confidence level was. And I was still being, tra I'm still being transformed. But I know in whom I believe. And I know that he is able to do abundantly more in me and in all of you. Right, Jaden? Then you could ever ask or think. Right, Daniel? Because it's going to happen, Daniel. God's transforming you. He loves you. There's something in you you haven't even began to see. There's a desire. There's a growing within you. And I don't understand it either, but when I see it, I'll be telling you about it. But it's a hunger. It's even like, I don't get this. I'm uncomfortable. I don't like this. I don't get it. I need to understand it because you like to understand things. But now you're understanding that God says you, you don't get to understand. We just have to follow, right? Right, Dakota? That's right. Right, Janine? That's what we got to do, right, Pammy? So when he said, go show yourself to the priest, right, Marcy? Yes. Wrap them things in heat and just keep walking and believing me. Don't let that distract you, right, Tammy? Don't let what the doctor says distract you, right, Tammy? Do what you need to do. Do the right thing. Use wisdom. But we keep walking forward because we know in whom we believe. The same God that rose Jesus from the grave. Ugh. I love him. I didn't choose him. He chose me. But I said, yes. Did you? Yes, you did. You don't have to be there yet. You don't have to be everything yet. Why would you be? <laughs> we never will be until we are with him. You know what I'm saying? But there is perfection taking place within us. So keep feeding that. Keep doing that. Right? He's got you. I don't know what I'm going to minister. I got it. Just obey me. Go show yourself to river of life, and I will bring the word. What? <laughs> That's what he does every week, and I'm shaking. I'm here. I'm searching. I'm listening to the music. I'm listening to the lyrics because worship, we raise a hallelujah yeah. in the presence of our enemies. <laughs> this little girl singing over her dead brother on the beach. Those two Nurses didn't have to be there that day. They thought that was their plan. That was God's divine appointment to save a little boy and resurrect him. And you know, you, you know the story where Hannah, maybe they, you don't know the story, but we talk about it sometimes. That Hannah gave her son, her only son, who she prayed and reaped, weeped for, to Jesus, to God. Now, here you go, here you go. And it was Samuel. He became a prophet. And these, this family said, I know he's yours. <laughs> I know he's yours. This should not have happened. You are still full of resurrection power, God. So here's this young girl that just, I raise a hallelujah. Just the chorus is so amazing. So the priests had to go and show, or excuse me, the leopards had to go and show themselves. And as it was that they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw, this is verse 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned. And with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So one out of ten went back and glorified God and said, you did this. Are we glorifying God or are we the other nine? 
that forget the goodness of God, that what he did yesterday isn't good anymore. Because today there's new temptations and I'm going to follow them instead or I'm going to follow my flesh because my flesh is strong. No, you get on your face and you remember what God has done because he has cleansed us leopards. (laughs) He is God and God alone. (laughs) I'm just going to cry because I can feel him in this room and he loves us so much and he's saying don't give up. Go and do what I've asked you to do. I will cleanse you on the way. I will take care of your children. I will take care of your grandchildren. I will take care of your husband. I will take care of your wife. I will take care of that ministry. It's mine. I will take care of your job. Follow me. Trust me. You have need of me. And I want to give to you. Go and show yourself. Go and show yourself. Verse 17, so Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? The one that would be rejected by society. Hello. Glorified God. We need to be the one. We need to be the one out of the ten. Because he's moving. Because he loves you. And he knows that what you endure, which we talked about on Thursday, is for the betterment of the kingdom of heaven. That what you endure as Christians, it's tough. But it's for your growth, and it's for the growth of the body of Christ. Because when people see your faith and your change and what you've been through, and you still love him, and you're still following him, even though your baby is dying on the beach, and some don't get resurrected. And they still choose to serve God? Wow. <laughs> you got faith like I never seen. Wow, you like your God's real. How could you love him when he took? Ah, don't uh uh-uh. don't have that mindset. That comes from the devil. Yes, it says in the word that he gives and takes away. But let me tell you something. We all have a time to live, we all have a time to die. When that time comes, it comes. So don't be afraid to fly. That was my issue. (laughs) Just saying. I want to live. But I remember, and this was stupid. Don't do this, guys. Don't do this. I was young in the Lord. I was in my late 20s. And my dad denied Christ. My dad was raised in the church. He knew he could recite the word. But he walked away because of what some people did in the church that was wrong. People do wrong things in the church. Don't be at church for people. Be at church to worship God. Know that you're going to get hurt because people are in this church. Shut the gossipers down. Don't listen. Guard your heart. But listen, I remember going home from church one day. I heard an amazing message. And this wasn't the thing to do, but this is what I did because that was my passion. I wanted my dad saved so bad. Bad. And everybody left the house so I could be alone with God. And I cried out to him, and I was just crying profusely. And I said, God, if it means taking my life, if that's what it would take for my dad to come into the kingdom of heaven, I willingly give it to you. And I meant it. I meant it. I'm thankful he didn't, but he did use my life and the stuff that I went through, the sufferings that I went through time after time after time. And the last time I went and dropped at his knees, I thought, man, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. I just can't do it anymore. And my dad started crying. He said, yes, you can, Joyce Ann, because I know God will change that fast. So he took what I endured and you endure in your life. People are watching. Because I stayed faithful all those years, even when I yet again went through a divorce, yet again was lost, yet again struggling, thought I could never, ever be loved by God again. I could never, ever get where I was. Nope, you cannot get where you was, but you can go beyond where you were in him. So the word is living in you and in your life. Don't ever grow weary 
of well-doing. Don't let the devil beat you up when you get it wrong. Listen, get a good accountability partner. Get somebody that you can be honest with and say, man, I did this again. Eventually, you'll stop saying, I did this again. And you'll be saying, oh, my gosh, <laughs> I got to glorify God. I'm the one. I got healed on my way to show myself. He's so good, guys. Almost done. So Jesus is like, where are they? Verse 19, and he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. You know, God didn't take back the healing that the other ones went. But maybe they didn't go and he was the only one that moved. I don't know. I don't know the Bible that well to know if it talks about it later. But what if he said to 10, but only the one really went, but yet he does say, where's the other nine? So they must have went. They must have got healed. But why his faith? I don't know, but he glorified God. See, your faith is your faith. You walk in your faith. Don't worry that, oh, I'm so, I don't have faith like pastor. You don't want to. You want to have yours that God's given you as you're being transformed. You don't want to have Dan's faith. You want to have God's faith. You want to have faith that you're given by the spirit of the living God. Almost done. I want to close with this. Verse 20. Now, when he had asked, when he was asked by the Pharisees, now, now here's Pharisees watching, now here's Pharisees. Uh, when the kingdom of God would come, and he answered, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here, see there, for indeed the kingdom, he says, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. So you see, we're talking about the kingdom of God. Don't you let anybody tell you different. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit is the kingdom of God. It is in you. It is in me. So when we are being used, we are releasing the kingdom of heaven. When you walk by faith, you are releasing heaven to come and fall on you or others. We might not get healed, but someone else might get healed. You, want, you understand? So don't stop releasing. Keep walking and go show yourself. Let's pray. So, Father, I just really thank you. We're going to do the same, God. I just thank you, and I praise you, and I love you. And I pray, God, that you take this word out and that you just mull it around and put it in good soil so it produces a fruit so that it can be reproduced through us for others. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for healing and resurrection. Thank you that you love us and you'll never leave us. Thank you that you're Adonai the Lord. Thank you that you're Elohim and El Shaddai. Thank you, God, that you hold our hearts in the palm of your hands, not our physical hearts, but our inner man. That you've got us, that you'll train us if we'll just follow, that you will disciple us. That's a better word than train, in case you thought of an animal that you'll disciple us by your love and that you'll transform us. So God, we give you everything today and we ask that you would have your way in us first and then through us in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. amen.